Hey everyone and welcome to the new channel. At some point introductions will be made, but we have news to get into. Destiny 2 Forsaken came out months ago. Critically, it was well received. Destiny 2 players seemed to love it as well, but who was notably not in love with it? Activision. While they did talk up its quality in their most recent earnings call, they said that it had been a financial disappointment and that it had indeed failed to re-engage the core Destiny audience. This, combined with a free game event on Battle.net, did not leave things looking good for Bungie, who notably disagreed with their publisher. No doubt knowing how bad all of this PR looked, Destiny director Luke Smith tweeted out, We are not disappointed with Forsaken. We set out to build a game that Destiny players would love, and at Bungie, we love it too. Building Destiny for players who love it is and will remain our focus going forward. That of course sounded pretty good at the time, and it was an interesting difference between the two groups, but as we now know, it was foreshadowing something far larger, and that is today's news. The freeing of Bungie from Activision, what that means for Activision, for Activision Blizzard, and what it means for Blizzard Entertainment. Yeah, the names get a bit confusing. Remember, Activision Publishing and Blizzard Entertainment are on the same level as units of the parent company, Activision Blizzard, well, Destiny is a independent developer who works on a public, well, worked with a publishing contract with Activision, the unit of Activision Blizzard. Now, this news has excited many. Bungie and Activision have reached an agreement where Activision will no longer publish Destiny 2. All rights to the Destiny intellectual property are entirely with Bungie. And what does this mean overall? Well, in short, it means that Bungie and Destiny are free. While their press release is cordial, when it was announced in the office, the, De the Bungie office, there were cheers from the staff. And Luke Smith tweeted out, Guardians make their own fate. That's a bit of a Duncan Activision. All of these problems stem from a few things. Overall, Destiny has never really reached its ambitions, and a part of that is on Bungie, but a part is also on Activision. And very connected to that is their 10-year plan. There was always supposed to be a Destiny release every autumn, be it a new expansion or a new game release, and that put a lot of pressure on the team. We also know the development of the franchise was well below expectations in terms of speed, and we also know that Destiny 1 was mostly rebuilt and re started in development, with the development of Destiny 2 actually not faring that much better. And this all led to consistent tensions between Bungie and their publisher. But what I think is not really talked about is how the structure and the systems, uh, how they would have been necessary to pull off this plan that they had and how they didn't really work out. Destiny has a main development team and a live team. Now this allows for all aspects of Destiny to be constantly in development, but really it does not seem to be particularly effective given their output. I would speculate that while yes, you always need a team working forward on the next big thing, they were likely in a position where their resources were being more dictated by fulfilling their contractual obligations and perhaps less dictated by the actual demands of the live game and, and uh, of the IP in general. While Destiny 2 is in a better state now, they were very slow in making changes, and especially once those changes became very apparent. The importance of a contract like that can't really be overstated because whether it's indie or AAA, publisher funding comes in milestones, hitting a goal by a date. And that's the problem. This would create a development structure that's primarily concerned with hitting those milestones to keep the doors open. Now, to be fair to Activision, you can't just hand over 200 million as a lump sum and just expect it to go well. But I think it might be reasonable to, to conclude that in this case, the payment structure, contractual obligations, and general working relationship was not to the mutual benefit of either company. For Destiny, what this all means is that the game is free, the IP is free. And this might actually, in, in my head, I almost speculated it would bump D3 development back, with the team now knowing that they're able to stick to the same title for longer and really focus on expanding on it, almost like a traditional MMO. Alternatively, Destiny 3 development could continue, but be pitched as a longer-term game. And personally, this all makes me a lot more interested in getting back into Destiny, um, especially if I would know that I would just buy Destiny and then keep on buying expansions rather than having to buy Destiny 3 and Destiny 4 and all of the resets and characters that that would entail. 
On the whole, I just think that that would lead to a healthier game with a stronger community, as well as, and this is important, a better risk-adjusted performance for Bungie. Franchise development could continue primarily based on the needs of the franchise, and not the requirements to fulfill a contract that we all know just was not working out really for either party. On the whole, I think this is fantastic news for Destiny players, and really it is great news for people who play games in general. We are likely going to see this franchise do better in the future, at least it gives us a good shot of that, and the overall failure and messiness of Destiny should serve as a bit of a warning to the rest of the industry. Bungie is now working for Bungie, and it is now free from having to prop up the Activision quarterly financials by, in that autumn quarter, always having a big release, even if it might not be what's best for the game. But how free are they? Because Bungie was not a unit of Activision Blizzard. It was an independent studio with a publishing contract. The money needs to come from somewhere, and as much as Bungie might have a large war chest, making AAA games with global ambitions costs a lot of money. Well, back in July of 2018, it was announced that Bungie had received $100 million in investment. Who from? From NetEase. Yep, the current trendy boogeyman who have been in the news through their collaborations with Blizzard Entertainment on Diablo Immortal, and then more recently, their 30 million investment in the ex Hearthstone director Ben Brode's new studio, Second Dinner. Now, we don't know what this investment is for. We do know that it's not for Destiny, that it is for new IP and new games. Now, it was an investment, not a publishing contract. And it's kind of hard to tell what it entails. Do NetEase have seats on the board? What are their voting rights? What type of shares? How is all of that working out? We don't know, but what we do know is that it does give Bungie the capital to expand into new IPs. On the whole, though, it must be quite lovely for Bungie. They started off as an indie. They, you know, they ended up trying to make an RTS. They got spotted by uh, Microsoft, and that RTS turned into Halo Combat Evolved, and in doing so, they were no longer independent. After completing Halo Reach, they then went independent, but with such a comprehensive and rigorous publishing contract with Activision that it really meant that while they technically were an independent studio, in effect, they weren't really. And this does bring me on to Blizzard Entertainment because I have seen so many people um, talk about that, you know, maybe think that Blizzard could break free as Bungie did. And I actually do want to dash hopes here because I think being realistic is important. Bungie was never owned by Activision. They're an independent studio with a publishing contract with Activision. Activision are a unit of the parent company, Activision Blizzard, as our Blizzard Entertainment. So what that means is that hoping for Blizzard to leave Activision Blizzard is the same as hoping for Activision to leave Activision Blizzard. It's just not that likely to happen anytime soon. And what does all this mean for Activision? Well, it is hard to tell right now. Destiny 2 was not hitting sales targets. The thing is, though, those sale targets were really, they were probably in line with wanting large growth for the game, such that their share, uh, shareholders would get excited and value the future of the company higher. It's totally possible to be making a large profit, but to have your stock drop. Just look at Apple. So while it may be profitable, and that's a happy situation for Bungie, it may still be profitable, but not really a happy situation for Activision, who would be dealing with a different set of concerns, such as maybe even, you know, their performance, as compared to the other units of Activision Blizzard. Maybe their own targets they have set to Activision Blizzard. It's unfortunate that the naming of these companies makes it all so confusing. Then additionally, the financial efficiency of the whole operation is probably lower, with MAU growth, monthly active user growth, probably being pay, uh, placed higher than profitability by Activision. And all this would mean that Bungie can now probably run the game as they wish to, likely retaining profitability and developing things more efficiently. As for Activision, well, they freed themselves from a constant source of disappointment, even if that disappointment may have only just been due to their unrealistic goals, with the root cause of that disappointment being their managing of the whole situation. I'd say that if this were a battle, say in the First World War, it often felt like Activision were commanding the front with flags and smoke signals from the Ritz in Paris. Not really ideal. With this change, though, it seems like the people who are in command are a bit closer to the front and free to be a bit more agile. And what does this mean for me? Well, personally, I have a higher chance of playing Destiny. Um, I love the gameplay of it. I obviously, you know, about two weeks kind of got tired of Destiny 2. It seems like Forsaken is a pretty good game to be jumping into, though, so it's quite likely that I'm going to do that. I'm going to check out Forsaken. As for Bungie overall, well, it's a studio that obviously has a, it has a place in my heart. Halo 2 and Halo 3 were core parts of growing up, 
and I mean, you know, I do the game development stuff now. It could be, I can't say this for sure, but I spent a lot of time in the Halo 3 Forge making custom maps, custom game modes uh, with my friends. And it could be that just a lot of people were, you know, inspired to go into the games industry because of the fun that they had in the Halo 3 Forge. So for me, and obviously Bungie are not, uh, you know, they don't have anything to do with Halo right now, but it's a studio that I care about. And while the Bungie of today may be different from the Bungie of those days, it still is exciting to see them be a bit more free. And when I've been doing research about Destiny, the franchise and its lore, it actually has really cool lore. It's just that none of it's really in the game. I think the narrative of all of their games have been pretty weak. I don't know about Forsaken, but it just seems like they've constantly really had all of these really great creatives with big ideas and never been able to execute on it. Who knows? It could be that Bungie will fail on their own terms, but at least this gives them, I think, more of a shot to make something that is targeted at their audience first. Hopefully it goes well and I wish them the best. So that's it for this video, the first video in this new channel. I'm going to be covering industry news. Um, I'm going to be covering maybe, you know, once a week, twice a week to get started. If it starts to go well, I will try to build out more of a team around this channel so I can produce more content. And uh, yeah, it's a fun new adventure. The, you know, as for the, the World of Warcraft stuff, that's still going to truck on. I've got, you know, I lit we literally do have a team built around that channel now. Um, so yeah, really, it's it's all going up. If you want more of this, then I guess smash that like button, hit that subscribe button. And uh, yeah, the more you support this, the more I can make it happen. And hopefully we'll be able to bring a, you know, a different voice to the gaming industry news sector. So thank you very much for watching this video. Thanks for taking the, uh, taking the jump over to it. And uh, yeah, with that, I'll see you next time.